Black Ops 6 is right around the corner. And yes, we have better news. The open free-to-play access beta is coming out within a day or two of this video dropping. So make sure you watch this video for your general tips and tricks, your most important settings, and everything else you need to know for Black Ops 6 so you can enjoy it. Let's go. And to start this guide off, we're going to keep it very, very simple. If you go over to the weapons tab and then you go to your loadouts, when it comes to creating a class, you're just going to click any of these custom loadouts that you unlock at level 4. Once you are at level 4, you'll be able to make your own custom loadouts. And then when you're making custom loadouts, there's a few things to keep in mind. We're going to start off with the attachments. So basically, you click any of the assault rifles or any of the, you know, SMG shotguns, any of the weapon classes, and you go to the assault rifles, and I'm going to just use the AMS for now, just as an example. If you go to your gunsmith, one thing to note down is that you can only have five attachments on a weapon. When Black Ops 6 fully comes out, you'll actually be able to have eight with a certain wild card that you're going to be able to equip. But for now, we were just talking about the beta. And if you really want to get out to a head start and really unlock the stuff that you really prefer, when you go to your assault rifles, the biggest thing that you're going to need to note down is that the only thing that is universal are going to be the optic attachments on uh, any of the weapon classes. So for example, if I wanted this Merlin mini sight on the top right here, you can see that it unlocks at XM4 level 25. So that means I would have to go get my XM4 to a level 25 to use this Merlin mini sight on any of my assault rifles. But now keep this one thing in mind. I made the mistake of thinking that they were universal across all weapon classes and they are not. And what I mean by that is I leveled this sniper right here up to a level 32 and it took me quite a long time and I went to this optic and I finally got the Kepler Microflex thinking that I was going to be able to use this on my assault rifles. But what I did not realize is that this will only unlock for the weapon class. So I have this red dot as universal on any sniper, but not my assault rifle. So it's universal to the weapon class, not all weapons in Call of Duty right now. Hopefully they change that because I do think this looks like the best red dot in the game. And unfortunately, I cannot use it on anything other than my snipers. But... Let's move forward. And for the next one is something that has also changed when it comes to Black Ops 6. You're going to be able to see that on your create a class, you have a melee, which is a knife, but you also have a pistol and an assault rifle. Now, in other games, if you wanted to use a knife, you would actually have to equip the combat knife in the most previous Call of Duty. But in this one, you always have a knife equipped. And when you do have your knife out, you have unlimited tactical sprint forever on the map. And that's going to be like that in Warzone 2. And in order to pull out your melee, which a lot of people were asking me for, all you have to do is hold down your melee button off a of spawn and you will immediately pull out your knife and you'll be able to get the places faster with faster movement and infinite tax sprint. and fun fact if you do keep your knife out and someone does catch you off guard it is a one hit kill every single time and that is much better than the two beat down that you're going to be doing with your assault rifle or smg in your hands and let me just tell you one thing the beat down time to kill is extremely slow this year so again if you want to have a chance of getting melee kills keeping your knife out is probably your best bet so now we're back to the creative class and basically you know you can get really crafty with all the attachments and stuff that you really want to do but the big thing in that is also new in black ops 6 that is kind of cool to know is that when you're making your class you can obviously have your tacticals stim shots are going to be able that combat stim that really helps you kind of refresh that tactical sprint and also heal yourself really quickly a lot of people are really using this right now it seems to be meta and then you can use any lethal of your choice and then your field upgrade again all this is pretty easy you know nothing too crazy here you have your trophies your neurogasses your amps right now i'm using assault packs for the extra ammo but going down here to the perks this is what has actually changed in black ops 6 and you can see that you have perk 1 perk 2 and perk 3 and if you go to your wild cards in the beta you have access to overkill which you can use two primary weapons in your slot we all know what overkill is and if you do not use overkill you're gonna obviously only be able to use a pistol as your secondary but if you go to your perk read you can actually add an extra perk and now this is where this gets pretty cool if you equip any of your perks you can definitely be crafty you can kind of have any of the slots that you want it's a perk one perk two perk three system but if you match the colors and you have three of the same color you actually get a specialty perk you have the enforcer which is the red matching which is kills enemies grants a temporary buff to movement speed and health regenerate which is my personal preference you have the recon which is the blue which is enemies can be seen through walls for a short amount of time after respawn which is pretty cool as well and when the enemy is outside of your view you are going to be able to get that high alert from war zone and then you also leave no death skulls so this one's not a bad one when you're coming off spawn you have a lot of info on your uh, just on your screen in general and then you have the green one which is going to be earn a score bonus for objectives and destroying enemy content and see enemy content through walls at a short distance destroy equipment and field upgrades faster that one personally i'm not a huge fan but depending on your play style you are able to activate this by matching your perk so if you do perk one right here you can see how i have it set up if a lot of people were doing assassin and then they were doing perk one perk two perk three and then if i was using overkill you would obviously still get that specialty perk but if you have perk read on you can get a little bit more creative which by creative i mean right here i wouldn't be able to use gung-ho because if i wanted to use dexterity which is probably the most important perk in the game by the way i would have to choose between uh, gung-ho or dexterity but if i go to this and i wanted to use something like I don't know, a blue perk or a green perk, 
I would still have that. But if I wanted to use Ghost right here, which is perk one, now I'm not going to have that specialty perk. But if you look at this, go to perk read and you put any of the red perks on, it doesn't matter what it is. Maybe bankroll. You want to get your score streaks faster. You are going to see that you actually get the specialty perk. So they do not need to be in a row, which a lot of people might think. All you just have to do is have three of the same color perks to actually get that done. So perk read is cool and you can definitely get more creative in a way with that slot being there. So you can actually use and mix and match perks that way too. So that was one thing I noticed a lot of people are actually doing wrong that they didn't know. So hopefully that helps you out and let's move on to the next tip. Another thing that you might not know about this new Black Ops 6 beta is that if you go to your interface settings and then you go over to the gameplay HUD, you actually have something called HUD presets in this game that are going to be really important as well. And you have a bunch of different layouts that you can choose from. And a big thing for most really good players or just most players in general is that the minimap is going to give you all the information that you need to know. And if you go over here and you scroll through all the different kind of ways you want your minimap to be, you can see that you can really customize the position of the minimap and where it's going to be. But the biggest thing that I've noticed is that Magnified is actually going to bring that minimap and that HUD a little bit bigger, especially for us old folk that are playing the game. You're going to get more information on a more magnified minimap and it's going to help out a lot just kind of seeing what's going on. And then once you do your magnified minimap, all you have to do is go over to the HUD bounds. I like to bring the HUD bounds all the way in. So these are just important settings that I'm giving you. I think just having it more close to the center of your screen is going to make it easier for you to get that information on your minimap. And then once you go down to the minimap shape, if you put it on square instead of round and you have your minimap rotation on, you're going to actually have more information on the minimap because the square minimap is actually bigger than the circle one. And now that we're on the topic of some settings, that is the gameplay HUD. That's probably the most important stuff when it comes to that. But there is going to be a lot of different movement settings as we are going to get into the Omni movement tutorial and just show you some pretty cool things that you can do with your Omni movement and just explain that process in general. So you are ready for the beta in Black Ops 6 when it drops. And we're going to go over to the controller settings and show you exactly what we're talking about. So these are the controller settings right here. I play on tactical flipped. I play on 7-7 seven, seven, simplified controls and all this stuff I have off. And then the controller vibration off and then the dead zones are going to be pretty important. So the left stick minimum is going to be very important to activate that rotational aim assist. In Black Ops 6, they actually nerfed close range aim assist up to about two meters. But outside of that two meter mark, you're still going to get that rotational aim assist using that left stick. And if you don't know what a left stick minimum and a left stick maximum is to give you the simple explanation for this video it's how quickly your controller reacts to the movement of your stick so if you want to test it out and you put your left stick minimum all the way up to something like 20 you can see that the red circle gets a little bit bigger into that side right there and then if you go to your stick dead zone you can see as you're moving it how much it actually takes to get your stick to actually activate and you know not have that much of a delay and when you want to use that left stick movement for you know, rotational aim assist and movement, you want it to be really responsive. So that's why most people that you're going to be watch playing it and just really good players in general are going to keep it as low as possible. I would recommend anything from zero to five, depending on what your controller can handle. Moving over to the maximums, this is kind of the same thing, but in a different way. A maximum you can see is as I'm moving this up and down, you can see that red circle on the outer is actually getting closer to the center of the circle. And all that means is basically instead of getting your stick all the way to the edge. So if I click test dead zone, if you want your stick all the way to the edge, like right now I have it pinned all the way to the edge of my controller, it's going to be fully activated, but instead it will be fully activated at 75% instead of 100%. So it's just going to make it a little bit easier to get your full sprint off as quick as possible. Now, again, not all controllers can handle a really, really low number. So again, I would recommend anything from 65 to 85 depending on what you can do. And then the right stick is gonna be the same exact thing as I was just explaining, just on the right stick. And now I usually recommend anywhere from three to five on that. And then 99 on the right stick max, because you want no kind of differential of the right stick, you know, when you're kind of aiming, it's gonna be a little bit different on that sense. It's not gonna be your movement. That's where you need to be really precise. So you definitely don't wanna mess with your right stick max. And then your triggers, of course, you want your dead zone and your triggers to be as responsive as possible. And that's why I have them on zero. I have my sensitivity multipliers all at one, nothing too crazy. I do not have a looking version on. And then if you go to advanced aim, aiming settings. Uh, aim response curve type. This is very important. You want to have that on dynamic. And then your aim transition timing is going to be weird. Normally you want it on instant, but there is a bug in Black Ops 6 going around where if you have it on instant, it just gets really, really bulky and heavy and it's actually not working as it's supposed to right now. So I would recommend trying it on gradual, but if you do see any announcements of them fixing this, then you definitely want to put this back on instant. But for now, keep that on gradual for the beta because that is a fun fact that it will help you out a lot with your aim target aim assist, we're always going to keep that on. And then motion sensor behavior, you have all of that turned off. And then the big one going the tactical sprint. This is going to be for the Omni movement. We have tactical sprint assist. We're going to have that at zero. Now people are saying that if you type in one into this box or two, it's actually going to help you, you know, just have a little bit less of a delay. People are saying that the two doesn't help as much. 
Uh, this one really just kind of depends on what you feel. I do anything from zero to three, but it's going to be at 400. Sometimes you do not want that at 400. You want the least amount of sprint assist delay that you can have. And then with Omni movement that we're about to get into, I personally think having sprint assist sideways and backwards on is very helpful, but this is all going to be preference on how you kind of like the Omni movement. If you do like sprinting in different directions and we'll get there in a second. So I have those turned on. I have my mantle and crouch assist off. And then I do play on slide dive behavior hybrid, which is going to make the Omni movement a lot more smooth. So I recommend playing on hybrid. And let's go over to the last and final couple settings here for your controller. And that is going to be aim down sight, ADS melee. And this stuff is not going to be too crazy. And then if you go to your advanced settings here, a big thing that you kind of want to do is just have all of these just kind of lined up. Nothing too crazy, pretty simple stuff. I play on prioritize interact because of Warzone, but if you have it on tap to reload too, it's very good for multiplayer. Now for the Omni movement, I am in the basic training course right now, and I'm just gonna show you some cool movements in this. And then of course there's gonna be clips and stuff that you can see as well. So basically for Omni movement, what it is is going to be that you can sprint in any direction. So normally you're just used to sprinting forward with that tactical sprint, but now you can also sprint backwards. You can sprint to the right and you can sprint to the left. You can basically sprint in a 360 degree range that is just gonna help you out a lot. So you can slide forwards now, you can slide backwards now, you can slide to the side, you can slide to the left. It's very, very simple. Now also with the Omni movement, you can now dive forwards. You can now dive backwards. You can now dive to the side when you're doing that. And you can also dive to the other side as well and diagonal and so on and so forth. And really quick, one thing I did forget to mention is the slide maintain sprint. I actually do keep that off and that is going to be really important for what I'm about to teach you right here. So now that you have your settings, when it comes to slide canceling, you want to hit your slide button and your drum button just like that. So mine is R3X, right? Just like that. And that's how you slide cancel around the map. And then when you're also slide canceling, you can slide, aim in and jump, slide, aim in and jump just like that. You can also jump, aim in and then slide. So if you are in the air and you hit your slide key, or whatever it is, you will actually slide as you hit the ground. So if I'm doing this and slide in the midair, I actually do hit that button and then I will actually be able to slide as I'm about to land as well. So you can do some crafty stuff with this when it comes to Omni movement. And what I mean by that is you can like slide aim in and then you can see how I'm as I'm sliding, I have my aimer up and I'm always ready for those gunfights. So something else cool that you can do is you can slide aim in like that. You can slide aim in and like that. You can just do a regular slide cancel like that as well. There's definitely a couple of different combinations you can do when it comes to slide canceling. So again, we'll go over the basics. It's slide jump. You can do slide aim and jump or you can do jump aim and slide just like this. And you can have that as well. And once you practice those, those are going to be your basic slide cancels that are going to help you in the Black Ops 6 beta. The next thing you want to do is obviously would be jump shotting, which is just jumping and aiming in. Jump shotting in this game is not as good, but it's not bad every once in a while when you're obviously jumping off ledges and you want to try and jump a corner on someone like that. So that's not a bad movement to know. And then of course, whatever you are playing on when it comes to your settings is if you aim in and you're shooting and dropping at the same time, you're actually able to drop shot. And that's going to be important because I do think one of the most underrated moves right now with Omni movement is what I'm about to show you. It's going to be the slide drop shot and you can do it in any direction in this game and that's why it's pretty cool and there's two different ways to do it. So basically, when you're running forward, you're going to slide, aim in, and then you would also hit your slide again and hold it to drop. So it's basically going to be like slide and then hit your slide button again like as a second time. So you're double tapping your slide. It's going to be slide, slide like that, but you're going to hold it on the second time down so you drop like that. So... If I was sprinting forward, slide, slide, and hold. If you were just sprinting forward and you slide and hold, you're going to slide and hold, but you can see my legs here. They actually kind of like flail out. That's going to be a different way to make your body just kind of do something different on the ground to be a harder target. And you can also do it that way too. So you can like slide and hold and look to the left and you can see that I'm like kind of leaning and doing some weird omni movement there. Or you can slide, slide, and hold and you can kind of look there and have it a little bit more structured of a way too. So there's a lot of different things that you're going to be able to do with this when I'm talking about the omni movement. And the coolest thing is if you're sliding here and you slide slide, you can actually strafe as you're kind of going to the ground. So you can see that I went from here and I ended up here, where if you're doing that all in a quick motion, you can really turn corners in a pretty cool way. So if someone was around like this corner, slide slide, then boom, you can see that I'm like kind of cameraing this corner as I'm dropping there. So that's a cool way to do it. Or again, you can do the slide and hold tactic, which would be slide hold. And you can kind of do something like that where like your body is going to do something completely different and crazy that is going to be harder to hit when you're moving corners. So again, a lot of different things that you could do with this Omni movement. Those are just some basic stuff that we will get way in more depth when it comes to a movement guide when the actual game drops. But I wanted to show you guys that. And now also talking about the Omni movement when it comes to diving. If you want to dive and shoot now, you can actually do that. So normally when you were diving in other CODs, you would have to land and then hit the ground and then shoot. 
but with Omni movement, you can actually shoot while you are in the middle of the air, and it's going to look something like this. So you're going to be able to shoot before you land, and then, of course, the higher you are up and the more air you have, the more, obviously, opportunity you can really kind of do that. So it would be like, look at something like that. So before you hit the ground, the Omni movement with the dives are also now pretty cool too. So the big thing with diving, and a lot of people were asking me this in my stream when I was doing that, how do I dive in the sense of what you do? And all you want to do is hold your left stick in as you hit your slide button. So if I'm holding my left stick in, I'm going to dive. If I'm not holding my left stick in, I'm going to slide. So that's the difference between that and hybrid just makes that more responsive. So you don't actually have to click and hold for so long. But then you want to dive, you can obviously kind of just like tap it and do it at the same time. And it's going to be super responsive. So Hybrid's gonna make that Omni movement feel really smooth where if I just wanted to slide around, I can do that or click and hold, I can dive. And then if I wanna like, you know, click and hold again, I would just click and hold, boom, dive. If I wanted to decide the corner, don't click and hold and boom, just like that. So it's gonna be all in your left stick when you're using this Omni movement. And as much as this Omni movement is pretty cool, this game has a really good balance where you don't have to be super flashy or use this Omni movement to also do good. So again, this is just a very basic guide right now. I will show you guys the ins and outs when the game actually comes out and we do that in-depth guide. If you were liking this video, make sure you guys drop a like because if these videos always do well, it obviously will always make sure that you guys are, you know, taking this content and want more of it. So I'll make sure I make more of it quickly. So again, drop the like if you are enjoying this basic guide. And that is kind of Omni movement just explained in general right now for the beta. And let's move on to the next tip. And for the last tip of this video, it's going to be a color setting on your mini map that is going to help you read the mini map better. And in my opinion, also help you see enemies better. So if you go to your interface settings and you go over to readability and you go down to color customization, personally, I like making my enemy color pink. It just makes them stand out a little bit more. I personally find red blends in with the map a little bit too much and it just makes your enemies a little bit harder to see. So I like making them pink. You can make them any color that will stand out to you more. Personally, I feel like the blues kind of remind me of teammates, so that's why I kind of keep it more on the pink side. But this can all be preference, but I do like this pink dot. And then if you go down to the color filter and you put it on color filter 2, color filter target both, and then you do world color intensity and an interface color intensity at 100, it will make your game more vibrant. And then speaking of the mini map and everything of how important it can be, they did change it this year where on the top left of your screen in the mini map, normally when the enemy would shoot his gun, you would see that it would be a red or a pink dot in this case that would come up on your screen. And then if they were above you, there would be an up arrow. And if they were below you, there would be a down arrow. But now, instead of it being an up and a down arrow, it's going to be a solid filled in red dot or pink dot, or it is going to be a circle that has an opening in it, which is going to look something like this. And if that is the case now, that means they're either on above you or below you. And basically, it means they are on a different floor than you. So if you were upstairs in a building and someone is shooting and you see a red dot that is open like that, that is going to mean that they are under you. So you can kind of pinpoint exactly where people are on the minimap in Black Ops 6, just a little bit easier. I personally like the up and that down arrow just because it's a little bit more precise. But just in case you guys didn't know that was a change as well that they did, that is going to help you guys out a lot too. So that's going to do it for this very, very basic guide on this channel. If you guys like this kind of content, drop a like. And of course, subscribe to this channel because we're going to have so much more in-depth guides on Warzone and multiplayer and movement and aiming and everything else that you guys need to become the best players that you can be in Black Ops 6 and then of course Warzone 4 or whatever the hell we're calling it. But yes, again, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys comment down below as well on stuff that you would like to learn about when it comes to Call of Duty so I can add them in my next guide. Appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.